it finishes, I'm going to open another terminal and I'm going to do the second command here, that is onus buck publish local. That onus buck publish local, what does it, it does? What it does, it basically gets the onus artifacts and publishes them to the local Maven repo. So people building applications via, via Maven can easily use Maven, archi Maven artifacts in the local M2 repo, okay? Well, I have one question that if there are any documentation for uh, Max Jenkins build system? Jenkins? Yeah. Uh, so, yes, um, well, documentation. Uh, I, I don't think documentation that has to be said. Uh, but uh, we do run nightly Jenkins yeah. builds, and we also use Jenkins for validation in our Garrett environment. Because uh, every batch that everybody sends to uh, Onus, to Gavit, oh, so every batch that everybody sends to Onus, to Gavit, it's going to be tested by our suite of tests that we have. It's going to be run a check style on it, Java tests. And uh, so that is done by Jenkins. If you're more interested in Jenkins, I can suggest you talk to an ONF guy, which name is Luca Brete. Luca? It happens to be Italian, as Andrea too. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Yeah, we have some Italians in, uh, in ONF. So let me explain a little bit here what's happening. You can see I, it's okay, getting the artifact and uploading it to the local and to directory. In this way, what we can do is actually build the application from the Maven archetype because we leverage the M2 repository where we are publishing, currently publishing, the artifacts that we need. So, now, while these things are doing, let's create this minimal application that I'll keep talking about. This is the only command you need. Okay? Hopefully, Maven finished downloading. Because we require Maven to be installed in order for this command to run, and it's done. So, yeah. And it's done. Since it's a Maven archetype, you need Maven. So let's get that command. So let me go through this command a little bit. It's on a straight app, that's the base. Then what we have is app, which means I'm generating the basic application. I'm generating the basis for this. Then you have the package name, org.1bin, the name of the application, and the version of this application, 1.0 snapshot. It's the first time we build it, okay? So now, if we run this command, what actually it's gonna do is gonna ask us for some things. Hopefully this works. Okay. Sorry, mistake. You see, this is live. So I need to do, before doing this, I need to go in a new folder, create, let's say, the one ping folder and go into it. Okay? So now we run the command because otherwise it was we were in the honors folder and it was conflicting with honors. So 
So it's downloading a bunch of Maven things that plugins and elements that he needs, like the assembly plugin, the ant run plugin. Wait for the download to finish again. And uh, it looks like it's kind of slow and it's moving. Let me turn up, let me bring up the presentation. Actually, let me do this. You see? Live live testing. So live testing of things. We, I forgot to put it in the slides. So we do the entire of the folder. <laughs> this is a, a Google Slides. Document so everything that Andrea is doing, you will be able to recover it and retrieve it when you visit the link that we've given you in the first slide. So it's just going home there, actually, make the actually one ping. Just fix the timing of the ping. One point. Okay. Ah, yes. So basically, he's asking us for a bundle archetype of ONS 112, and it's not existing. So, what we need to do is actually wait for. This architect version, which we didn't publish. No, it's it's waiting. You just see, almost bundle architect jar one twelve dot snapshot is missing because it, there's no well, bundle archetype for the latest version of almost. This is some live troubleshooting that Andrea is uh, attempting to do. Because the last uh, published hash type is for uh, ONUS 1.11. And uh, now when we run BOT, we recover the last uh, version from the master repository, which is 1.12. And it's been 1.12 for the last two or three days, so it's uh, the latest, latest release, latest and greatest, and the way to install the latest and greatest on those releases is the way that we did it before, but it creates, creates a problem with the archetype, the Maven archetype that we're trying so to... So an easy solution, but which is uh, impossible now due to the connectivity, uh, is to uh, enforce, uh, to download and work uh, with the uh, branch of 1.11, and for that we don't have any problem. Yeah, uh, one, so in, in the previous commands that we were showing when we were downloading ONOS, if you add the, the attribute minus B and then the version that you want, for example, 
or run point 11.1, point you can force uh, the download to be the version that you want. And the tag is minus B. Correct. For so branch. Yes, we have to put that on the slides. Yeah, here basically. It shows all the OMOS branches. So actually, you do get. So master is 1.12. And we didn't aware of that. <laughs> because it's maybe just yesterday or yesterday. But that's good because you learn uh, new, new things about how to, to, uh, to deal with such a so, problem in the future. But 11 is... Well, the latest of these, we're gonna go, we're gonna go there. And we're just gonna redo almost but publish local, and this is actually gonna publish locally the jar we need. In the meantime, I've also downloaded it, so if this doesn't work, we can also switch to that. And so, and uh, what I can show you is that everything. Maven generated from Onus is published on the on Maven Central. So you can go to Maven Central and like it's not there. You can go to Maven Central and here you see org Onus project, the group as a group, and you can find all the archetypes there, all the elements that you need. Back 24, front and pay attention here for the RT. Uh, you see, five, five, six, archetype, archetype. These are the things we're using, so I'm actually switching to 111. And that's the last version, we don't have 1.12. So as Onus moved to 1.12, we have this complete problem. For that reason, with Git, we are forced to go to the branch 1.11 in order to be able to, to continue and work without any conflict. And I'm simply republishing the artifacts to the local M2 repo. So previously it took maybe five to seven minutes, no more. No, 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 no. So it should be okay. Hopefully this fixes the, the issue we were seeing. So I have a question. Yes. Uh, actually, the difference between Buck and Maven is. Uh, but didn't update uh, Maven repository. Yes. So, because now in 1.12 we are using Buck only, not Maven. So, is that uh, customized Buck for the owners or uh, Maven repo automatically updated through the Buck? Uh, no. So, when we release, we uh, run a tool that publishes Maven Central, the publishers of Maven Central are release targets for Maven. For locally, you run this command, onus back, back publish local, that updates your M2 repository. It's not done automatically. This is why you have, you have to do it by hand. It's not that the, the Maven uh, uh, repository is uh, you know, abandoned by owners. It's just that it's not been updated yet. That's the reason we had this problem we had. So 1.12 will also keep supporting Maven. Uh, well, the whole build by Maven, no. Not the whole build, but this uh, yeah, should be. That's why, that's why we're showing it to you, too. also because it's a simpler way of creating applications. This way, instead of using back, which is actually, it's not the actual back application that's made by Facebook, but it's a modified version uh, by uh, Onos. Yeah, we added, we added a few elements on top of back because we needed for our own. Uh, well, let's say packaging properly. So we needed uh, some metadata in the OAR, and we added uh, we added uh, elements to Buck to, to do that. If uh, this doesn't work, I'm gonna switch to the. I'm actually gonna do something which is well, not great, but we can. Otherwise, what we do is we actually download the application from the Git repo. Uh, this, uh, this test application is actually on Git, so you can also see it from there. And I'm going to go through that and I'm going to show you 
well, that, at least that side of the presentation. I remember a video by you and uh, Tom Thomas from Albatruska where it's, it must have been 2015 or 16, I'm not sure, uh, from ONS if I remember. Where yes. Yes. Thomas was saying we invited uh, Murphy and he did the RSVP. <laughs> So in our case, he did. He did that as we did. Yeah. yeah. So well, yeah. There's a there's a there's a video. Uh, I can maybe put the link to in the slides uh, back from 2016. ONS 2016, where we run the same. We run the same uh, without the. Well, we did the same. In fact, um, at the last almost build in uh, in Paris as well. It's uh, it's published on the channel YouTube channel. Uh, I suggest I suggest the well. ONS version. It's uh, I think better. It goes in more detail in some in some elements. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the the link to it uh, right at the end of the slides. And in the interest of time, we can start going. We can start going over the code that uh, we will generate. So if you go in the, the slides, I actually put the link to the app we're, we're, do, we're, we're creating here. So this link brings you to the GitHub uh, page of the application. And what I'm gonna do is gonna actually get it. So I'm cloning the, the repo, which is on GitHub. It's gonna take just a few seconds. Okay. So this is the application code that will be generated by the archetype that it's well, waiting on maybe to finish. In the meantime, let me show you this, this code. So we can go into, into IntelliJ. So we import the project. <coughs> We're going to go into the folder of the one main application. And just need to add the JDK for Oracle. 
in order for Java to recognize this is in So now IntelliJ is going to import the code for us. It will take a little bit of a moment, and then the code will show up. This is because we're also running. Murphy is still with us, as you can see. So, well, fortunately, I have it from from uh, from uh, from GitHub. So, just to, just to go a little bit over what this application is doing, I like to guide you through the code that you can also look at home. This will not be auto generated. What will be auto-generated for you will be the class, the structure of the project, the activate, deactivate method, and like these things, for example. This is a very key element. This is a component which gets picked up by Caraf and run by Caraf. Oh. Okay, so as I was saying, the what is it? It will create for you well, the package, for example, packaging for the Java, the bundle XML, <coughs> which we will take a look at now, and also this add component. This is what tells Onus and the underlying Caraft element to get this and make it run. Immediate true means that as soon as this component is loaded into OS, it's an OSGI component, and as soon as it's loaded into Caraft, it gets activated immediately. So once the bundle is, is up, is loaded, the application will be immediately activated by this command line. And here, you can see references. This is another um, OSGI tag uh, that is leveraged to put together reference exactly two or more components. So what we're saying here in this code is that we are referencing 
we're referencing other elements of the Autos code base, such as the core service, the flow objective service, the flow rule service, the packet service, and all these things are needed for our own application. And I'll show you how we use those. For example, let's take the packet. So to do our own single ping, what we need is actually to intercept all packets, as we did for reactive forwarding. Yes, let me let me add some, to something, Andrea, because we had the problems with the actual uh, population, and we forgot to say that the purpose of the one ping application is to allow single pings only. So when we ping uh, from one device to another, only one ping can pass through; the other other pings will be rejected. This is the the goal of the, the objective of the application. So here, for example, we need to intercept all the packets. So we're using what Onos tells you as the packet service, and we are creating a new packet processor, you see here. What this packet processor does is that it gets the, the packets and it munches them. It analyzes them. It does what you want. Basically, if we go here to this packet processor, which is down here in the same class, by the way, here, packet process, big packet processor implements packet processor. Packet processor is an interface defined by Onus, which provides one method, which is process. And it gets handed the packet context. So this packet context contains everything that almost knows about that packet that's coming in. We're getting notified here in this process method for every packet that comes into the network. So in this case, we're saying, please get me the in packet and the Ethernet address of that in packet. So if what that type of uh, packet is ICMP, only if it's an ICMP ping, we're going to process it. So this is how you intercept the packet and you work on it. Okay? And we're going to do some work on it, which means we're going to do process ping. What process ping does is basically gets the device ID of the packet we received the ping from. Well, yeah, from, of the device we, we got the packet from. And then it gets the source MAC and the destination MAC address of the ping. We can do we can, the ping packet. because We can do this because we know it's an ICMP ping. And then it creates a new ping record, which is just a utility class that you create to store this ping. And then we see if we already received the same ping record, which is pings, get device ID contains ping. So what this does is that if it returns true, we say, oh, the last, this is the second time we ping a packet. So we ban it. Otherwise, we save this packet for later. So let's see how to ban a packet. This is where you can start seeing some flow programming logic. So Onus has the notion of match and action, which are called selector and treatment. Selector is the match, treatment is the action. The traffic selector we're building a basic match action that matches on the source address here, but matches on the source address and even a destination address. Simple as that. If you match on both these elements, so if a packet arrives that matches on this source and this destination, you have to do some action, which we are building in the treatment. So the treatment we're building a drop action, which is as simple as default traffic treatment, 
dot draw dot build okay and then this shows the power of the flow objective service the flow objective service we're using it to install a, a forwarding rule a forwarding flow objective with selector and treatment which is match on this if it matches drop it but this is the abstraction we were talking be about before we don't care in which pipeline match the source and destination we don't care uh, how you do the drop action we build a flow objective and we install it so we build a default forwarding objective which means we are trying to forward and not forward the traffic from an application which is our application id with a selector so a match and a treatment an action the drop and then with some uh, like uh, we make it temporary in order for it to be deleted after I, a certain number of seconds this basically I said 60 seconds this removes that flow objective and the flow underneath flow rules after 60 seconds and then we call add here this gets that flow objective and puts it into the flow objective service the flow objective service is another element which we ask for as a reference in here you see flow objective service so when your app needs to install a rule to the flow objective service you install it through this so this is what we explained in the first session in the introduction when we say when you want to write your application you are not aware of uh, all the details of the structure so here we say just as a treatment to drop or forward the packet or whatever else as action we don't care about how many tables do we have the structure of that table uh, their capabilities uh, the vendor type or the vendor name the hardware name of the switches type of switches we don't care about all that the flow objective uh, service will do the rest of the job and this is the abstraction uh, point that we talk about and this is the the abstraction that make your application or the creation of your application easy in fact because here you are focusing on your logic what i want to do in my code i receive a packet what i want to do forward to some port drop that packet uh, forward that to another server for balancing etc okay so another element that makes your development application very easy is like for example onus offers you mechanisms to register a set of listeners so in this case what we're doing is we're registering a listener to the flow to the flow rule manager which i'll show you the code how to do it but what does this listener do this listener simply stays there and says hey give me any update on the flow rules that are installed into Onus, that are installed from Onus into the switches, sorry. So here we get a flow rule event. This, if you subscribe a listener, you get all the events about that, any flow rule on the network. For example, in this case, we're gonna get the subject of the event, which is a flow rule. Then we say, is this the rule removed? Rule removed. Is this the event that we're getting? And that flow rule was installed through the flow objective service by our own application. And we're saying, oh, we removed the rules to re enable the ping, to uh, disable the ping. So basically, if we remove the rules, we can say that we re enable the ping. So, how do we get all this information? We get this information by registering the list that I just showed you to the flow rule service here. So this registers a listener from your application to a core element of ours to get all the flows events. And here you see we add 
a processor for the packet service, and we ask to intercept any of the packet and process them through that processed processor. Okay, and this brings me to another very important point of all those applications, the activate method. As you see, we are in the activate method. This activate method, it's the method that gets called every time you load an OSGI component and you make it active. So, in, in our case, it's basically doing it through the ONOS app activate app deactivate method that I can show you with another application, for example. It's the same thing as what we did with the, with the graphical user interface. It's just another way to activate or deactivate applications, this time uh, through the CLI. So I'm just running on us so I can show you some, some commands. So this basically it should uh, since we already built on us, you see, it's just running Java C on the UI, running OSG Grab on it, and in probably 20 seconds should be done packaging it, so a few seconds. Basically this will restart almost without having to rebuild it. You have still to go through the packaging process because that creates, we started with a clean flag, so that wipes out everything that was for the previous ONOS instance, so even the package that was there. Boom, done, uh, 37 seconds. And it's a two core machine. So. So it's, it's a perfect occasion to show you also the auto CLI. So let's open a new terminal. And to get to the auto CLI, I'm going to make it bigger so you can guys see. So when you have an auto instance running, as we do, if you do auto local host, in this case, because it's the almost local host environment, it should bring up the almost UI. And you see here in the almost logs, we're generating a key for that CLI that we just opened. This is the almost CLI. We're basically a raft based CLI. So from here, you can do stuff on applications, just apps. Minus A minus S. And this shows you which are the current active ONOS applications. And this is the same as the UI that we very showed you before. But this is also something more powerful. Let's say we want to activate an application that is not active. So we see all the applications. So let's say we want to activate uh, a Path Painter application which shows you different type of paths between the two elements in the network. You can do app, activate, or dot on this project, tab completion works. Just say yeah. And the name of your application, in this case, path painter. So now if we do apps, minus A minus S, boom, the last one, is the OS application that we just activated. And this, this app activate Oracle's project path painter is what calls 
the activate method I was telling you about before. So in our one big application, the activate method, and in general in every application, is where you put the what your application needs from Onus. So in this case, we're saying, okay, please, Onus Core Service, register this application for me. And we're gonna give it the application name, which is Ordonos Project One Big, and we're also gonna give it a lambda to throw some log. And then we add to the services that we depend upon everything we needed, okay? And then we call it start. For example, if we now go to the Onus log, we're doing this example with the Onus Path Painter application, but you see the logs. The Path Painter application started. This means that it is available to Onus and to users to, to actually use it. Then, to the application manager, it also notifies you that the application has been activated. This is an event that Onus throws. So if you will register a listener for application events, you will actually get this application event. But what we can do is that, like, for example, our bot painter application, let's see if we still have the Onus UI, yes. So we reload this, and we log in. There are no devices because we have no uh, running network, but we can run on the network. Okay, let's bring up a network. Same as we. So we bring up a network as we did before. And now we have some stuff in Onus. Sure. Okay. Now the path painter application in this case is pretty obvious, but basically what it does, it adds a layer here, so we can we are showing also an application that brings in some UI elements. So it adds a layer here where you can select an element and set it as the destination, as the source, sorry, and another element and set it as the destination, and it highlights highlights the path between that source and destination. You have, it will not show here, but you will, you have different type of path. So show the path, this joint path, geodata weight path. And this uses the path service, which is another service that's already provided to you by others to compute path between two network elements. So let's go back to the Onus CLI. In the Onus CLI, we said, okay, we have the application, which is active. Now, without having to tear down the Onus cluster, I want to deactivate this application. We deactivated it, and in the logs, we will see that the application has been deactivated. And so in your application, what do you need to do when the deactivation process happens? The deactivation process is basically clean up after yourself. Just, you have some things that your application installed into ONS, such as the packet processor, the, 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 app, the, the flow rules that you have installed, and the flow rule listeners. So these things are not needed anymore since your application is not running on the network anymore. And if you don't clean up, up after yourself, Onus will encounter problems since these things are not pointing any, to any instance, not pointer exceptions, for example. So here, we just do we remove everything. And these methods are provided by the Onus core services to clean up after yourself. So you remove the backend processor, you remove 
all the flows by ID, and this was why in our demo before, the reactive forwarding application was not working anymore. So the ping was, was stopped because we removed the flow routes by application ID. In our case of the one ping application is the Oregon project one ping. In case of the reactive forwarding application, it, it is the React, uh, Oregon project FWD application. So this, if we, if we go in the UI, we can actually see the effect. You see, Simon, which is our UI expert, made like, okay, you need to refresh the UI because you, some components were removed. So you just refresh the UI, and as you can see down here, we cannot activate the Path Painter layer anymore because deactivating the application made us remove anything that the application put in place. One cool thing that you can do in, now in the applications is actually if you select any of these applications, you can actually download it. For example, let's see if I can do this. Path Painter. Yes. So this is the application that we had in Onos. We installed them, with the, we deactivated and deactivated. So why don't we do this? We download it as an OER file. Okay, save file. So this is downloading the OER from the application on Onos on your machine. In this way, for example, you have an Onos application running somewhere on top of your Onos instance in, in a place, and you want the same. Oh, my authorization token. It took, it took us too much. So, you want that application to be downloaded to your machine, you can actually do that. Also, from like here, you can actually delete an application, like uninstall them, remove it completely from Onus. And now, you see, it's 128 and not 129, because we actually removed completely that application. The application code does not exist even more on OMS. So with this, I'll finish my time. Fortunately, that the live demo didn't work. Uh, I hope uh, you can follow the instructions on the slides. And if you encounter any problems, the, the release problem, like pushing the M2 uh, elements should be done in uh, maybe a week or two yes. weeks, because less than two weeks. It, I guess. it takes us some time to push those artifacts. So please, uh, I encourage you to try it out through the slides, and uh, you can always uh, follow up with requests to us. So just as a final pointer, I want you to check out these links. So in the slides that I share with you, you actually find the video I was talking to you about before, where when the M2 repository actually got properly set on the machine. And uh, it's me and Thomas, as I've said before. There's also a wiki page to do this, to try it out uh, as a template application. And uh, the get started with all those documentation is basically what we did in the tutorial before. So install it, activate it, and see a minute connect to it. I hope this was uh, helpful to everybody. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see any hands raising. And we want to thank you for being here for all this time, more than Three hours, almost four hours here problems. with us. I hope we uh, helped you understand more about Onos, about the way it runs, the way it's installed, the way applications are created. We are at your disposal if you have any questions from now on for the rest of the Onos build and in the future through emails. And we thank you again for being with us. So, just as a final point, 
Uh, this work that you've seen today was made possible by the huge amount of effort that was put in by the teaching brigade. This teaching brigade is exactly what the name says. We want people to learn about ops. We want people to learn and code and start like new experiments and new use cases. And thankfully enough, we have the leader of the teaching brigade with here in class with us today, which is Abdullahim, and uh, he was very great in starting this effort. And this effort started at Onus Build last year through an idea, a thought, it was like almost random at the coffee machines. And since then, it progressed so much that we had so many members. And you see these many members tomorrow. And we were able to create a lot of good material that we will share with you with some slides uh, tomorrow. Abdullahim is going to give some links. But I want to encourage you to join us. And what I mean by joining us? I mean that you can play with these things. It fails, send us an email. That's already something that it's awesome for us because we're getting some feedback. Or you want to do even more. We have people here in the audience which are actually contributing to the teaching brigade with videos, with new documentation, with awesome content that they're creating and sending to us for us to package. And we're in the process of packaging two very important modules, which are the, which are the base module for SDN, where you can learn the main SDN concepts, and the 1.5 module, modules, we call it the 1.5, which is the honors module, where you can learn everything we showed you today. And in fact, I want, I want to add, uh, as I was saying, that we don't uh, address only the SDN and honors issues in the teaching brigade, but rather, in fact, we want as well to address all the deaf, pop, things, ansible, vagrant. Uh, we need as well to talk about local, open stack, because local and open stack are used in, the, in court, because court is a complete solution, uh, as uh, we saw this morning, uh, that use owns as controller open stack for the infrastructure, uh, XOS uh, as orchestration system, Docker to put all the servers inside, and the interconnection between all these technologies are called. And when you just virtualize your network function for, uh, let's say, for uh, 5G objectives, you, you will have what we call it M core. And if you do it for, let's say, for DSL solutions, uh, you will have D core that's one. So core, uh, finally, uh, based on owners as controller, uh, but we need to teach uh, the related technologies as well. So uh, if you are good in programming, maybe in Java, uh, could be in networking in general, because before to talk about SDN, uh, which is software defined network, we need, we need to learn networks, the traditional networks to understand how to go from the legacy network to the new network schemes. So please, if you are able to add any contribution, networking, programming, uh, dockers, virtualization, uh, NFV, uh, any other topics related to the SDN complete solutions, you are more than welcome. So thank you again for your patience for more than four hours. And if you have any question later, you can take, up, yes. take us offline and uh, ask, you can send email, we will be happy to help you, to discuss with you, to share uh, experience with you, and to learn from you as well. Thank you again.